So the intent was there. But there were a lot of home remedies. Everything was a home remedy. Healing well was a home remedy for this. If you needed something cleaned, it was a home remedy for this. How many of you have followed me long enough on social media that you now have a bottle of Mrs. Stewart's wooing agent in the shower, <laughs> in the in the in the crafting cabinet, in the laundry room, and everywhere? Yeah. So it was it was those kind of things that I grew up just learning how to do and knowing how to take care of. There was always a DIY solution to it. Um, of course, when I became a teenager and did everything the wrong way. But I remember when I had my daughter in 2005, and I held her for the first time, and I just remember thinking, nothing's ever touched her. Nothing has ever been on her, in her, around her. Like, I just have this perfect, pristine palette, and I can do it right, and I can do it different, and I can do it right. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that was, but it was a feeling that there are almost no words for. And I couldn't let that feeling go. And I would go shopping at Target or I'd go shopping at Walmart and I would grab the baby shampoos and I would read the labels and I would think, this is, this is not what the picture says it should be. This doesn't make sense to me. And the more that I would jump in and read those ingredients and I would start to understand those ingredients, the more I started to discover that it's not a lot of people that do know how to do it right. I think we've got it wrong. And it was really shocking to me that there are countries in the world that have these ingredients banned. Same company, same product, but we have a different formulation in the US because we have different, well, we don't have the same restrictions. The more that I started to discover that, the more I started to realize that if I wanted to do it right, I was going to have to go back to a lot of DIYs. I didn't know what company that would be, I didn't know what products that would be, but when I fell upon essential oils, I started to realize how many things that I could make and start having control over, so then it became a matter of well, what company would be the right company. I don't know how many of you know this, but I actually live on a farm, and I married a farmer. <laughs> and farming is a long generation in my family. I'm a seventh generation farmer, my husband is a seventh generation farmer. And so I understood the importance of planting it, growing it, harvesting it, and having complete control from start to finish. So when I found Young Living, I knew I had the company that was right for me. And then the bonus to that is that I was going to get an opportunity to share with other moms how they could do the same thing and start a movement. And that's what we ended up doing. So I'm going to share with you today a few of the things that I've discovered along the way, a few of the ingredients. <laughs> that I've stumbled upon that I want to help you understand. I want to help you understand how to read your labels so that you can make empowered decisions. Because somebody might hand you a bottle of something and say, this is really clean, this is really great. And you might see on the news, that's the fastest growing green company. But if you don't know how to actually take that bottle and turn it over and discover for yourself, you would actually be bringing a lot of harmful, potentially harmful, how would I say that? Potentially harmful, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I want to speak compliantly so that you know when you're having classes how to speak compliantly. Um, potentially harmful situations into your life and into your family and into your home, okay? I do truly believe that you can have a chemical-free home, and I don't believe that you have to sacrifice any part of what you do in your daily routine. Um, just to be able to have that clean home or be able to achieve the things that you want to in wellness and beauty or in fitness. So, when I wrote the Chemical Free Home books, a lot of those were my grandma's recipes, but I cleaned them up. <laughs> I added oils to them, and I've done research along the way to know that we can replace things like bleach or hydrogen peroxide. Did you know that? And did you know that the EPA actually allows that? It's in the fine print. How many of you do daycare or know someone that does daycare? And they have to still clean with bleach because their licensing says that they have to. But if you go onto the EPA website, the approved alternative is hydrogen peroxide. It's just in the fine print. Cleaning grade vinegar is also an alternative, but it's in the fine print. How many of you just want, wait, cleaning grade vinegar? Do you guys know what that is? It's a higher percentage, oh, it's, it's not for food consumption, and you can find it in the cleaning aisle. It has a real strong aroma to it, and it is light, yep, and it'll be in a specially marked bottle, okay? You'll find it near the Mrs. Stewart's cleaning <laughs> <laughs> if they aren't sold out. <laughs> is 
Even though people are going to an event where they're going to be making the things, I will say it again. This has been one of the greatest ways to grow volume in my organization. So if you have somebody that is striving towards executive in your organization and they're going to host a make and take, they're going to need to purchase a lot of supplies, correct? And they're going to be doing smaller sample or travel sizes of the things that they're making. So their guests are going to love what they make and they're going to want to make it again quite soon. So they're going to end up getting an enrollment or purchasing the product, so again, generating volume, if you do the make and take right. So I've seen make and takes done where they'll invite a bunch of friends over, they'll have the stations, they'll have the recipe printed out, and it truly is just a free-for-all buffet, make it, everything you need to learn on what to add is right there. But you're not teaching your people about what ingredients that they're actually eliminating from their life, toxic ingredients, by creating their own version of this product. And that's really important, why? Because you want to empower people. Because I promise you, when they walk down the street, they're gonna meet somebody that says, I'm part of the fastest growing green company and our products are clean and our products are great. But if you don't empower them to know how to turn the label over and read it, they're never gonna know. They're never gonna know. And the sad thing is, is that in the US, we still don't ban a lot of those ingredients that are banned in European markets or the APAC market or Australia. So when I have a make and take, I have somebody in my team that volunteers and kind of mans each station. Okay, we usually make three to six things, and then we'll have another station that's an experiential station. So we might try balance complete. Um, in the summer we do one where everyone has to shave their legs. What? Using Copaiba vanilla conditioner as the shave cream. And then they put Mira oil on afterwards. And everybody talks about it for years later because they shaved their legs outside on the back porch on a summer day. It leaves a memory. It's an experience that leaves a memory, okay? Plus, they're learning how to use our products in a different way, all right? Did anyone know that we have a luxurious, luscious shave cream? co Eva conditioner. <laughs> okay, so I'll have you know, three to five stations where you're actually making something, and then I throw in that experiential station. And so when they go to the stations, there's a volunteer there from my team, and they'll say, okay, so right now we're going to make uh, Opre Sun. So we're going to make a serum that you're gonna put on your skin before you go out into the sun to keep your skin hydrated and well cared for, okay? Totally compliant way of saying all the things, okay? Then they're gonna say, by making this product yourself, you're eliminating oxybenzone and benzone phenone. Let me tell you a little bit about that conventional toxic ingredient that you'll find in conventional outdoor summer day <laughs> lotions. <laughs> okay. And if you're thinking, Melissa, I don't know how to say oxybenzophenone, let alone look it up to see what it's about. I got you covered. <laughs> so in the front of the Chemical Free Home Books, I have those ingredients listed. And in the face and body one, I have a whole write-up on oxybenzone, benzone, phenone, plus the studies that were done on it and why it is an ingredient you should eliminate from your life altogether. Okay. Um, I also did the same for some of the three most toxic ingredients that you find in conventional products still today, especially in companies that will say that they're green, but they still hold these ingredients. like isopropyl alcohol, fragrance, and phenoxyethanol, okay? 
I'd like to look to markets in Europe, Australia, and Japan and see what ingredients they have banned that we haven't yet banned in the U.S. And those are areas that will ban ingredients first because they have to protect the aquatic life and the coral reef. Makes sense. Not saving the fish. We'll worry about us later. <laughs> so about 12 to 15 years ago, the ingredient was triclosan. And all the European markets were banning it. Nobody in the U.S. was talking about it yet. Are you familiar with triclosan? Triclosan is a directly linked carcinogen. It was used in every antibacterial product there was. I talked to our state representative to see what we could do about banning the ingredient. He said, oh, he said we would never do that as a standalone because that singles us out on an island. Guess who was the first state to ban the use of triclosan? Minnesota, as of January in 2020. But they did it not that we're banning products coming into the state to be sold, but they're banning manufacturing companies in Minnesota from using it because of our lakes and rivers and the harm it does to the fish. Triclosan is found in antibacterial soaps, uh, antibacterial wipes, the hand sanitizers. But Europe already discovered that decades before us and had banned the ingredient. Well, one of the ones that those markets are banning right now that we have not yet even started to talk about is something called phenoxyethanol. It's P-H-E-N-O-X-Y ethanol. Phenoxyethanol, all one word. What they discovered in Japan is that babies were having high levels of phenoxyethanol and toxicity poisoning in their body, and they couldn't figure out why because it wasn't in the products the baby was using, but it was in the products that the mom was using. So the danger is, is that it happens through skin transference, and it's a neurotoxin. So it disrupts the central nervous system. We don't even talk about that ingredient in the US. Young Living has it on their list of over 2,500 banned ingredients, so we don't use that. It's a zero tolerance, non-negotiable, we will not go near that ingredient because we know better. Isopropyl alcohol would be another one, also known as rubbing alcohol, it's the same thing. The danger in that product is that it is high flashpoint, so it's highly flammable. It, do you remember when people were making their own sanitizers and they were doing videos of Everclear and it would be on fire but you couldn't see the flame? That's a high flash point. And so isopropyl alcohol does the same thing. You could light a match under it, it could be a flame, and you won't even see it. And people are using it to make, um, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh because we only know what we know. <laughs> They're using it to soak pieces of fabric in to then throw into their dryer for scented fabric sheets. You can imagine the danger. My dryer uses heat. I don't know about your dryer, but here on planet Earth, we have dryers that use heat. The other thing people are using them for is to make room sprays or craft DIY perfumes. When you are spraying something out of an atomizing bottle, you're mimicking um, a pretty low grade diffuser, but you are still breaking up those molecules and dispersing them through the air. When you spray a perfume or a body spray, are you spraying it towards you or towards uh, away from you? Towards you. And where is one of the first places to spray it? Chest area. So, direct inhalation, right? Isopropyl alcohol also disrupts the central nervous system and it causes toxicity in animals and in children fairly quick because they're such a sensitive, um, their bodies are sensitive, okay? And the third one is fragrance that I still see used a lot, especially still in companies that will call themselves green or a clean company. Fragrance is, and someone actually asked me yesterday, and I went to the Saudi booth, and she asked a really great question. Um, and she said, I feel kind of dumb for asking this question. And don't ever, we only know what we know. Don't ever feel silly for asking any question. But she said, when people ask her what's the big deal with fragrance, she said, I really don't know how to tell them. Why is it a big deal? I said, well, it is a big deal because the word fragrance is just one term that houses, it's a blanket term that houses around 3,500 chemicals. A lot of them were grandfathered in by the Toxic Substance Control Act and have never been tested for their safety on the human body or the environment, but they're still being used. A lot of them are known for carcinogens. A lot of them are known for maldehyde reducers in the body. A lot of them are estrogenic. And so I asked her the question, I said, when you're talking to somebody and they say to you, well, fragrance really isn't a big deal. And you, do any of you ever have someone say that to you? Fragrance really isn't a big deal, it's used in everything. It was with that, they wouldn't use it. 
something like that are going to be? Oh, no, I'm 21. So I am 21. Um, when I was in high school, it was the common age uh, for a girl to start menstruation. It was usually junior, senior year, 16, 17 years old. How many of you would recall the same? Yeah. And what is it today? You can't tell me that our products are clean. That doesn't just happen. In, really, in such a short amount of time, in 25 years, something's not clicked, right? So if you look at how our products are produced today and the amount of fragrance we've added into every, literally everything. Garbage bags. It's hard to find anything that doesn't Everything. And when you go to the store and you go to a cute boutique and they wrap your clothes in the tissue, they spray it first. And then you're taking those scents home with you. It's, they're scenting everything, feminine hygienical products. Everything is getting scented with fragrance. And a lot of those chemicals that are housed under the term fragrance are estrogenic. It means they mimic estrogen in the body. <laughs> If those three things that you could just start with today to eliminate from your home, you'd be making such a great impact for your family. And I don't care if you're cleaning your floors with it and you say, I'm just cleaning my floors with it. Are you barefoot in your house? Do you have children that walk to your house? Do you have a pet that walks to your house? Not to mention, those VOCs are still in the air. Those are still airborne. There's a video, it's about 30 minutes, and you can find it on YouTube. It's called Toxic Brew. It was done in the early 90s. You can tell by what they're wearing, so you'll catch it right away. It was done by the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corp., so you'll also be able to tell by the accents. It's called Toxic Brew. And in that, they take conventional cleaners, and they go upstairs in the kitchen, and they spray. And the man takes a meter that measures the VOCs, and he goes down into the basement, and it's not a basement, not a bougie basement, people have today, it's, it's a true old-fashioned basement, right? The kind you don't go down because people go down there to die in horror movies. <laughs> that kind of basement. So he goes down the basement, under the stairs, and he measures. And he measured VOCs that were higher than what OSHA had at permissible safe levels from what was sprayed upstairs in the kitchen. So you have a ventilation system in your home. Furnace, air conditioning, whatever. That is picking up everything that's traveling in through the home, and they travel. Uh, there's, when I do this class on a bigger scale, I'll stand in front of 500 people, and it'll go 30, 40 rows back, and I'll take my perfume that I've made and I'll spray it. And you can usually reach about 5, 10 rows back, and people can smell it. But then I take a little handheld fan, and then I will spray and use the fan to disperse. <coughs> And it always blows my mind how far back people can actually smell that. And you experienced that yesterday when they were spraying oils just with a spray bottle. So you experienced the same thing. So those VOCs travel. What do you want to be inhaling? So if somebody says to me, but I'm just using it to clean my shower, or I'm just using it to clean my floors, should it be in your home? There's a class that I do with my team. It's literally a walking class. I don't have to do anything to prepare for the class. If I do it the day after my housekeeper was there, <laughs> I don't have to do anything to prepare for the class. I don't have to put anything special out. I don't have to put anything special away. But I will do a walking class through my home and we go room through room. And anyone can open up any cabinet, open up any drawer, and I encourage them to. And they see how I have all my products set out they see all the things that are in my laundry cabinet for crafting things. They see all the things that I use. When they open up my cabinet for my laundry detergent, they see the laundry detergent that I made or the organic one from the grocery store. They'll see the thieves one in there. They see a bottle of Dye Dyes, my Mrs. Blewett's, my Mrs. Stewart's bullying agent, and a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> That's what they see in my laundry cabinet. There's literally nothing to hide, and I am so proud of that, that when people come walk through my home, because I am a product of the product, I, I model the company I represent in every single room of my home.
and then they can see the, how I have my protocols and routines set out as well. I did a wild fast track video. I don't know if any of you caught it and um, took you guys on a tour just through my morning portion of the routine. So like waking up and how I have everything set up and the oils in the shower and everything is right where I need it. Everything is in, within reach. It's so important to show your teams how you have created your own chemical free home and why you have swapped out some of those items. When you can teach the people around you why you are making those choices and how they can make those choices, you empower them for a lifetime. And you can't unknow those things. What you just learned today about phenoxyethanol fragrance or triclosan um, or isopropyl alcohol, you can't unknow that. And now you'll know how to pick that bottle up the next time you look at it and read those ingredients. And if you find those ingredients on it, you know how to turn the bottle back over and put it on the shelf. How many of you grew up in the 80s and remember the pink bubble bath in the bathtub? Mr. Bubble? Are you too a victim of Mr. Bubble? <laughs> Chronic urinary tract infections? Do you know that there's a warning right on the bottle? There is a warning right on the bottle of Mr. Bubble bubble bath, still to this day, that says prolonged exposure may cause urinary tract infections. And the interesting thing is, is that when you look at the ingredients on Mr. Bubble, and then you look at the ingredients on other conventional bubble baths, the ingredients are the same, but the other ones don't have the warning. They're required to put the warning. I just think that Mr. Bubble Bath, because there was actually a class action lawsuit called victims of Mr. Bubble Bath, <laughs> that they then put the warning on. I'm also still unclear to this day what prolonged exposure is because I think the whole point of a bubble bath is prolonged exposure. <laughs> I, I don't quite understand. <laughs> and I wouldn't use it for a foot soap because what you're putting your feet in is still going to absorb into your body. So the ingredients that I listed out in the front of the Chemical Free Home for housekeeping and for face and body are going to be the most, uh, the, that first forefront most toxic that you want to eliminate from the products in your home. And I've also laid them out in a way for you to explain that you'd be able to teach a class off of. And the products that you make in the book are eliminating those things from when you make them yourselves you're eliminating them because you're going to be purchasing the, purchasing the conventional version of it. So then you would be able to mock the same class that I just explained. So if you're going to make a room spray, you would be able to explain that by doing this as a DIY, you're eliminating fragrance and you're eliminating um, isopropyl alcohol, right? So you're going to be making things, let's say you choose five things to make, you're probably going to eliminate phenoxyethanol and fragrance in each of those five things. So you wouldn't mention it at all five stations, right? You would just give the education at one of those. So that by the time they get through five stations, they have learned in depth about five to 10 ingredients that they will know how to eliminate from their home. But you're going to want them to be empowered when they go home to have something to remember the list by, right? If you go to my website, I actually have a little printable PDF. You fold it up. It looks like a little mini brochure when you're done. You can just tuck it into your purse or your wallet and you can take that shopping or you can use that as a handout at your classes. So if you go to melissapeppian.com under resources, you'll be able to see that there. I also have one uh, called cause and effect, basically 21 ways to poison yourself before breakfast. So it lays out what a conventional morning routine would be and the products you would use and what conventional ingredients would be in them and the hazards and dangers that those ingredients are linked to, so that you can understand which ones would be carcinogenic, um, estrogenic, which ones disrupt the central nervous system, headaches, nausea, all that fun stuff, right? When you can work with your team to start identifying those steps just in their morning routine, you might help them to understand that the way that they feel the entire day was because of the things they were using in the morning, cause and effect, okay? so. It is a really powerful exercise to be able to do that. We have a tendency to think, if I use just a little bit, or if I'm just using it occasionally, that it doesn't really cause a lot of harm in my body. Yeah, that'd be fine. You know, my oven's really dirty. I just gotta clean it once. I'll get the conventional spray. 
it's going to be fine because it's just once and I only do this once a year. One of the biggest catalysts in my desire to want to share with others the importance of knowing the ingredients that they use in their home was a, was a tragedy that happened in my own family. My aunt hosted Thanksgiving every year and she hosted an amazing Thanksgiving. It was pure perfection. She would have loved being in Young Living. She had a massive garden, did everything DIY, just was, she's an amazing woman. She wanted everything perfect. And I don't know why, but she needed to have her oven cleaned for all of us to come over on Thanksgiving. She used a conventional cleaner. And as you spray the oven, of course, and you do then, you know, heat it up. And as she was reaching and cleaning, she lost consciousness. And um, she ended up passing away from the vapors and inhalation of oven cleaner. So whenever somebody tells me a little bit isn't going to hurt, well, because it's just once in a while, products like this should not be used in any home, any home, ever. So a little bit does matter. And I don't care if it's just occasional. It does matter. And there are always, there are always going to be ways that you can alter to make it fit your lifestyle. Now, is my oven as clean as it would ever be as hers because of the product she used? Probably not. Does it matter to me? Not in the least bit. <laughs> not in the least. I use my oven and I'm proud of that. Does it take a little bit extra work for me to remove a stain from something? It really does. I can't just throw it in the laundry with everything else, but that's the world of convenience that we've come to, right? So I have a basket in the laundry room for items that need to be mended and items that need special care or cleaning. And then on laundry day, those are the ones that I spend a little bit more time with. And then I work that stain out. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, but I get the stain out every single time. And I'm proud because I didn't have to use bleach. I didn't have to use anything that was gonna cause neurotoxicity, give me a headache, or anything that should be handled with a hazmat suit. <laughs> right? Now, if you go to the OSHA website, you can look up any ingredient used. Do you know that you can do this? And you can see the required handling for any one of those ingredients. And it shocks me how many of the ingredients that are in products that people would use every single day actually do need to be handled with a hazmat suit. It also shocks me how many women still use a few products in secrecy because they don't want someone else to find out or that they're using them because you're in Young Living. You should be proud about all the things that you use. And I want you to be proud about all the things that you use. Perfume is usually one of those last things that women decide to swap out. So they'll still use it in secrecy or they'll just spray their clothing and not spray their body, right? But we can still smell you coming. <laughs> Tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about perfumes and the importance of making those decisions there and how you can craft your own and still smell like you walked out of Chanel. <laughs> So you, won't, you don't have to smell like a, oh, you don't have to smell oily or like a blends, but you can actually smell like you walked out of Chanel. It's very, very beautiful, classy blends. Do you have any questions on your DIY for home? Okay, those are great questions. So a couple different ways. So the first one, did you ask like, where do I get all the supplies? Where's like a, a one yeah. store shop for supplies? Or sure, but not considered where, but just like, yeah. mm -hmm. I know So in, in the chemical free home for a housekeeper, for both of them, I have like pantry items. So like just the staples that you should always be equipped to have, you know, so you're sure. So before I do a, a make and take, I just go through, here are the things that I'm gonna make, and I kind of figure out, okay, if I have 20 people here, this is, I'm gonna need this much almond oil, I'm gonna need this much Castile soap, which I buy those things by the gallon anyway, because I'm constantly just making my own stuff. Um, so those are just the things I always have on bulk. 
uh, I always usually have a case of vodka because of all the things that I'm crafting all the time. I've never drank it, but <laughs> I've got to go through a lot of it. <laughs> you kind of wonder about me at the liquor store because <laughs> we're a small town and like, Oh, there's that girl buying another case. <laughs> taking classes, making perfumes. They're like, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so those things I always, always have. In fact, before, before I left, um, my housekeeper needed more window cleaner made up, and I was busy doing other things, and my my 15-year-old uh, had just moved home. So I'm like, Tyler, I need you to whip up a window cleaner quick. It's like, like, I'll walk you through the steps. I think I was washing the dog or something in the sink. And as I'm like, uh, you know, grab the Mrs. Stewart's, grab the hydrogen peroxide, you need to grab the vodka. And he's like, where's that? And he's like, it's behind the laundry basket. And then he just open up and he's like, oh, <laughs> there it all is. <laughs> it's such an odd place to have your vodka. <laughs> so those, those things I usually just always have because I'm making them like all the time. But I'll go through and I'll just make sure like, you know, if we're going to have 20 people, I'm going to need, you know, 350 drops of lavender. So I just make sure I have all the bottles and everything. So I start prepping for that about a month in advance, four weeks, three, four weeks in advance, just so I can order it in time if I need anything. And then I'll use my points to redeem it. That's just always a great way, right? Um, then uh, bottles, stuff like that. But right now, given today's climate, you have to order that stuff a little bit sooner because sourcing is hard on a lot of those things. Um, so just spend a little bit more time on that maybe you know, and find cute things. There's so many cute bottling options now. Um, I also like the reduce, reuse, recycle. So like the little veggie soap um, containers that look like little jugs. Those are really great for laundry soaps. If you're going to do a, a make and take with laundry soaps, those are really great. Um, mason jars are another really great thing to use for that. So um, even empty these have soap cleaner bottles, like you can take the labels off. So doesn't, don't don't get caught up thinking it has to be all the same bottle either. You can make it really eclectic. Really, it's just the size. You know, an eight ounce bottle is an eight ounce bottle. So get creative with that. When your um, shampoo and conditioner bottles, the massage oil bottles, and all those are empty, you know, peel off the labels and repurpose those. I always think that it's great to show people how to do that, and it helps you do it on a low cost, no cost way as well, right? Uh, then as far as the station, so one of two ways I do it. If it's a smaller make and take. Then I will take, I got like little bucket totes at the dollar store. So I put everything I need for that particular station or um, make and take item, I put it all in that tote. The towel, the label, the bottles, the ingredients, the oils, everything. So if it's one I'm gonna do by myself because it's just a smaller group, we can all sit at the same table and I just take that spread out. I'm like, okay, next we're gonna make this. And I give the education as we make it. Rather than dumping all the education up front, I like to do it as they're making it because there's like a muscle memory to that. So as they're making that particular item, let's say with Mrs. Stewart's flooring agent in it, they're gonna remember the importance that they're eliminating dye or they're eliminating, you know, because they're right there hands on to that muscle memory. Um, if I have a larger group, so I've done make and takes with 75 people and got everyone through in an hour and a half. This is fun. So I had six stations, so I broke everyone up into six groups, okay? So it's a little bit of work and math you have to do up front. The groups have to be an even amount of people, so everything flows, you know, the same. And then the education is given by that volunteer at each station. So beforehand, I just do a sheet, I write it up for them, like these are the two ingredients we're gonna talk about. Um, here's some questions you might get. So everything's handy for them. It's so super easy. Uh, the recipe is right there. Give respect to authors, please. Um, it's a lot of work we put into producing these. It's about an $80,000 investment if I'm gonna write a new book. By the time I get my uh, designer, the photography, the amount of books I have to order up front to get a good price to pass on to you, the marketing, everything, the time, the all of it. It's so when you share recipes without consent from the author, you're violating copyright laws, but you're also giving a huge dishonor to that author, and it, and it does hurt us emotionally because that's our work. So when you're having your make and take, please don't reproduce a recipe and print it out 
there's so much emotion that goes into what we create for you. Like these are my grandma's recipes, right? And so there's a story that goes with them and that's part of the recipe. The perfume book, I don't know if you know this, but if you read it front to back, it's actually a really sexy scene from like a thriller, like a thrilling movie. <laughs> it's really good. And then the cologne book, I leave everyone on a cliffhanger so they want to know when the next recipe book's coming out. <laughs> they, want, they want to know what happens to the two characters. But every perfume has an aromatic brief and an aromatic note, and it really sets the intention for how you should feel when you're wearing it. And so when you recreate it, that you're taking that from your member, and that's not fair for them either. So what I do is I have the book open at that station, and there's so much education in here too. And you want them to see this book. You want them to have their hands on these books because they're gonna flip through the other pages and they're gonna see the other things that they can make that they're not making there that day. So what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna go home and buy the oils from you to be able to make the things. They might also wanna buy the book so they know how to make the things. So you can either build the price of your registration, build the price of a book into the registration so everybody gets one. This is, this is empowerment you're putting in your people's hands, right? Or, you, plus they're coming to a class, it's not just a make and take. So then, figure if you're building in the price of a $15 book into their ticket, they're coming to a class, you're having fun things them, there for them. I usually charge $60 for my make and take, and I'm covering the cost of the five to six items they're making, I'm covering the cost of a book, or the recipe cards or booklet that they would be getting, and they get everything. I don't profit off my make and takes. I would say, I don't make money teaching my class or targeting and registration, I get that from my ODB, from my check comes from Young Living, not from my not from my members. And so when I have a class, a make and take class, if I'm charging too much, well, they're not gonna realize how economical it is to make their own. So I only wanna charge what I put into it in the products. And you can, if you want snacks there, do a potluck, do something fun, bake some, you know, there's always ways around that. Um, but then what I do is I time each station so people are only at those stations for five to seven minutes, something like that. Then I have, usually my daughter or one of the boys, at five minutes, they sound an air horn one time. And we do these outside, I suppose that. And then they know that that's their, their one minute warning, and then at six minutes, you, they blow the air horn three times, and then everyone has to go to the next station. So it flows really nice. So they have five stations where they're gonna make something, one station where it's that experiential, like in the summer from a make and take, they shave their legs. And then the seventh station, it's just a sit and chat station. So that's where I get to see everyone, and that's where I get to talk to everyone. So one of the stations is literally, we just sit on the back porch and we just talk. Like, what are you excited to make today? What did you make today? You know, how are things going? What kind of questions do you have? And, you know, I'm so proud of you for swapping these things out of your house today. And you're gonna learn so many great things. Here's the tips I have for you. So everyone gets that chance to sit and chat as well, which is really nice because then I get that opportunity with everyone that came. So that's when I do it on a larger scale, like 60 to 70 people. Yeah. So, and razors, you can get at the dollar store. Yep. So the whole thing is done so economically. And they take those home with them. <laughs> so, yeah, sanitary, they take those home with them. And then when you're cleaning things between all of your stations like that, use your the DIY that you made. Use your thieves hustle cleaner. Like let them see that you know you're taking those sanitizing efforts too, but that you're using your own DIY to do it. That's a really great question. Thank you. <laughs> that actually is a really really good question. So the quality of vodka does matter. So just like we have a distillation process and our distillation process is so refined that you get a very pristine final product. That, so there are brands like Effen, E-F-F-E-N. Um, they have a very high quality distillation process. I think they distill it like 20 or 25 times or something like that. So you end up with a final product that is odorless. And when you craft a perfume in that or a room spray, you'll actually see the oil separate to such a beautiful degree that it actually looks like little specks of gold. It's, it's really a stunning final result. So, but if I'm using an outdoor spray or if I'm using the back porch spray or something like that, I use the cheapest bottom shelf I can find. Because then, then I really don't care, you know what I mean? 
but if I'm crafting something like a room spray or a perfume or something that I want to look pristine, uh, then I use the highest quality vodka I can find. And Effin is a really great brand, and it is super fun to walk into the liquor store and say, where's the Effin vodka? <laughs> My five favorite stations to make. The summer, the summer make and take is my favorite. So we do the Opre Sun, the Avant Sun. So like before you go out in the sun, after you go out in the sun. Uh, we do the outdoor spray. We do a cooling mist. Um, the, the, I give them the option to want to craft a perfume. So once you start getting into crafting perfumes, the the price will go up. It's, you know, fifteen to twenty dollars. So I give people the option for that. Yeah. But that the summer ones that, I give. Yes. Yeah. So there's a book at each station, right? So then they have that there, um, or you can build the price of a book into their ticket. Even the perfume. Even the perfume book. Yes. So for the perfume books, um, if you have somebody that's returning to the class. So you can offer two ticket prices. Like this is your price if you're first time coming to this class because it includes the price of a book for you. And then you can have a second ticket price that is if they're returning to the class because they won't need to bring the book. You just tell them your price is this, but you have to bring your book with you. Yeah. Really good question. Any other questions? Posting make and takes and crafting with your team two purposes. One, this is going to help grow your organization. Number two, you're going to empower people to actually be aware of and knowledgeable of the products that they're using and the importance of eliminating chemicals, conventional toxic chemicals from their life. This also safeguards you in your business, if you're building a business, because once you give your people, like, so Jennifer's back there. Jennifer has been in my team for 12 years. I. I know, I do, I never have to worry about her using professional products from a competing company because she knows how to read her labels and she knows exactly what to look for because it's something that I preach over and over and over again. And it's one of the first things that she'll look for when she grabs a product and turns it over. She's like, you're using blah, 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 blah. She can rattle it off. She knows exactly how, right? And I'm so proud of you for that. And so the decisions that she makes are based off of all this education that she's gotten over the years, and then she gives that education to her team. The more that, the more lineage you have in your organization, the messages become diluted, just as with anything. So you always want to make sure that you're at the forefront delivering those messages too. So over and over again, educate your team. So in my team pages, I'm not just posting about products, I'm not just posting about an oil or the benefits of an oil, but I'm also bringing in that ingredient education because I want people to know how to read their labels and understand how to read their labels. I always take cues from conversations, right? Um, like it's tempting to walk into someone's home and go, holy moly. <laughs> And then you just get a little, like, sit down, we need to have a talk, and you grab out the book, and I'm going to know, but, like, it's really tempting to do that, right? Uh, but what, <laughs> what I do is I pay attention to the cues in conversation. So they might be telling me, like, they're having a hard time sleeping, or they have a headache, or they're having, like, oh, have you ever thought about, like, brown paper bagging, all those candles you got? <laughs> just give them a try and see how that goes. Um, so I just watch for those cues in conversations. Um, I will also like I if I'm at if I'm at someone's house, I don't even care if it's family. If I'm at somebody's house and they have a conventional hand soap, I will not use it. Um, if it's a holiday and they want me to help with dishes afterwards, but all they have is conventional um, dish soap, I will not be doing the dishes. Like I will not. I, I have a very firm threshold on that, and that's one of those things where a little bit. I don't need to bring my own. Like, nope. They know by now. <laughs> and then I'm going to be for 84 years. They know by now. Like, <laughs> they know me. They know by now. And so I just, I, I have zero tolerance for that. And so then they learn by that as well. Um, 
my 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 grandma, not both, not this grandma, but my other grandma is probably giving me the hardest time uh, for you know things natural. Just use this; it's not a big deal. Uh, I went to visit her a couple weeks ago, and she has a, a dry spot. She's just had her 97th birthday, and she has a dry spot on the side of her face. She's like, "Do you make me anything for this?" I'm like, everybody, remain calm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the procedure? <laughs> like, like, I was so shocked that she had asked me because that was only how many years of dripping, right? But that's also me, just that firm boundary. Plus, people start to see like. All people make comments about my age or they'll see pictures on Facebook and they're like, you literally look like you are aging backwards. I'm like, it literally is the products I use. <laughs> like, that is my response to people. This isn't a magic thing that I'm taking. It's literally the products that I use. I loved Dr. Ollie's presentation today. Really, the key to longevity is three pillars. It is your wellness, it is your fitness, and it is beauty. And that's what we're bringing in with the three new powder products. Like that, that is so huge for you guys to just grab onto that and build your entire organization with that, and build your entire message off of that. Like that, that right there, and there's nothing else, right? And so, like I said earlier, when you come into my home, you can open up any cabinet in my home. Jennifer knows, like Jennifer, open up any cabinet in my home. <laughs> it's all younger me. She's literally inviting you to come over and do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> Yeah, you're all going to be knocking on the door. <laughs> so it's being the product of the product, like, so Jennifer sees that. So she knows, and she lives six miles from me, like, she's over all the time, right? We're at each other's house all the time. Like, so she knows the products that I'm using. So she knows why I have the energy that I have, and I have, you know, the, the skin that I have. And it, she, she knows, because that's, it's, it's the results, it's the effect of the products that you're using. So that's one thing, model it, right? And have a zero tolerance for it. Um, I was once invited to a spa party with you know the girls just get together and it's just that was our evening. It's we rotated and there was a group of five of us and we all picked something different every time. So I go to this thing and realize this was not your this was not like the coffee date we usually have or the whatever. They had someone there from a product company. I'm like, that's not nice to do. Don't do that to people either. Let them know what they're coming into. No, it's not nice. So the woman was there with all the products and we're doing a foot soak. And so she's about to put the stuff in the foot soak. I'm like, can I see that please? And I grabbed it and I'm like, the ingredients aren't on the bottle. Are they on the box? She goes, I don't know, I'll check. And she went to grab the box and she goes, no, the ingredients aren't on the box. And I'm like, do you have a product brochure? So she grabbed the product brochure and they weren't on the product brochure. I'm like, she goes, well, I can look on the website. And it's on the website. I'm like, it's okay, I can just use water. It's fine. <laughs> because I was not about to compromise my standards. We go to the next thing, and it's the lotion. They did the same thing. So I'm like, I can just skip this step. And then the next one was a facial spray. Same thing. I'll just skip this step. She wasn't able to, but she said, I will call the company, and then I'll see what you know we can do about getting ingredients. And I said, that would be fantastic. She called me two days later and she said, I called the company and they don't disclose that, but if you can tell me what ingredient you're trying to avoid, then we can tell you if it's in it. I'm like, would you like my list of 2,000 things? Like, PDF? Like, how exactly would be the best? And so I have a zero tolerance for that, and that's what zero tolerance means. It means no exceptions, right? Because it doesn't matter if it's one time, it doesn't matter if it's just a little bit. Yeah. You'll see me in the bathrooms, like, I won't use that soap. I wash my hands, I dry my hands, and then I have my thieves hand purifier. That's what I use. That's just what I do. That's my standard. It just becomes so much my routine. And so your friends and your family will see you do that, and it might take a week. It might take a month. It might take 10 years. But they will come around, and they'll ask you, because they're going to ask, why are you literally aging backward? And you can say, it's literally the product that you're doing. Okay? What? I have a question. Stirring all that up, look at what you're inhaling. 
or you're going into the bathtub, you're doing the same thing. Like you're making a toxic pot right there, right? So just number one, think of that. And that's a huge motivation to want to choose different. But I would do a cleaner where you would use these Costco cleaner and just use super washing soda. So it's a little bit different than baking soda. So it's a little bit stronger. Super washing soda. It's actually the base of what OxyClean would be before they would add any other things to it. Yeah, so super washing soda, once that mixes with water, hits the same chemical constituents that hydrogen peroxide would have. So, and then once that oxygenates, you'd have the same effect as bleach. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, and there's the Thieves Kitchen and, the Thieves Kitchen and Baths um, scrub too that you can use, but yeah, if you want to DIY it, Thieves Household Cleaner, super washing soda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for their clothes? For their body. <laughs> for washing their hair? So you wash with the, um, try the curly girl method, and you can do this with, uh, with the Young Living shampoo and conditioner, and it takes a little while through the process. Um, just read through the steps of that, because that, that does help, and that makes a big difference. It, no, the curly girl method you'd look up online. Um, and then I would use the lavender mint clarifying shampoo and conditioner for that, or the lavender. I wouldn't do the Copaiba vanilla, it's just be too hydrating. So use one of the lavenders. And then for their hair afterwards, look at the um, the uh, Sweet and Sassy Hair Spritz that's in here. And that just helps keep the hair, it helps with flyaways, it just helps keep the hair tame. It's not a hairspray, I did not have a DIY for hairspray. Um, but it's just something that you spray in when the hair is still wet, and then they would just scrunch that in. No, she'll, she'll look it up on the curly girl method. Yeah. And then as far as teen boys, yeah, that's a whole process. <laughs> so is it because of hormones or because of the products they're using? DIY their own body wash um, because I just want something that's a little bit more masculine smelling. And we do, um, so they actually will just pick a scent from the cologne book, and then those are the oils I add to their body wash. So that's what they use and prefer. Um, and there's there's alternatives to deodorant, but I'm the one buying it, so they don't get a choice. And every once in a while, I'll see something different in their room, but they bought it. That stuff's expensive. So I encourage them to buy like their video games so they don't have money left. Okay, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, a lot of great, a lot of great options. One last question, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, F and is the brand that I definitely recommend for your most pristine things you're gonna craft. I use Philips for all the other stuff. Um, but just look for if you're using like if you can't get F and then look at their just go research like the company and look at their quality. I do not recommend potato vodka. It gets really starchy once you start mixing it, um, and it just it changes the the final color and it just gets a, it gets a really weird finish. So I don't recommend potato vodka. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely would be another good one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Those. Yep. Those are your, the ones on the top shelf. Yep. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you guys so much.